liberation movement, uh, liberation greetings <laughs> to all and uh, sundry. My dear people of uh, Amazonia, my fellow brave warriors of uh, the Southern Cameroon's liberation movement, accept greetings from me, Comrade John Akuro, this uh, Sunday, which is uh, December, uh, January 7, 2024. Of course, this is our first encounter in this new year. I know our last encounter was actually on the last day of the year 2023 that is right now in the museums of history so folks i'm delighted to be here with uh, with you once more for us to have uh, another interesting conversation i want to extend hearty regards to all and sundry and once more i'd like to wish happy new year to all our people wherever they may be I want to thank those of you who have reached out consistently to check on me to find out what was going on. Mr. Akuro, I've not seen you online. What's going on? Is everything okay with you? And none of that. Say, well, I mean, I had a cold. Recall the last time I was on the set, I complained that I had a cold, that uh, I mean, I, I was barely really coming on. But uh, thank God I'm way better today, and that's why uh, I'm back here, of course. 2024 is a decisive year and so uh, we are going to be more frequent here because we need to be able to you know cut the t's and dot the i's as we await uh you know the actions of all the compartments of our liberation movement with respect to making the cost of occupation continually heavy for la republic du cameroon to breaking point because right now La Republic du Cameroon is already sniffing very seriously under the weight of debt. We have made life completely difficult for La Republic du Cameroon and the citizens of La Republic du Cameroon who were telling us vous allez lire, who were saying on va vous écraser, who were saying on va vous dératiser. Today they are feeling the effect of the war like seriously. In the in uh, I mean in the past a few years back, those that were feeling it in La Republic du Cameroon were families of the talks Mr. Bia continues to send to our territory that were you know falling, and so whenever they fell is the families and uh, the extended families that will be in pains that will be feeling the effects of the war, but they will still deceive them to think that uh, that they were doing a very patriotic there was a patriotic lap. But today, more than ever before, it is getting clearer and clearer to the people that they are personally, personally now involved in the war. That is even right down to the least child in the Republic of Cameroon is now clearly feeling the effect of the ongoing annexationist and genocidal war that the Republic of Cameroon has been leading in Amazonia since 2017 or even since the end since towards the end of 2016 because the first death that we recorded akum julius was in on the 9th was in the 9th or no, on the 8th of december 2016. so folks let's hang on we shall continue therefore to be on this platform to mobilize to sensitize and uh, to share information to ensure that we continue to strengthen all the sectors of our liberation movement as uh, we also watch La Republic du Cameroon descend into its dark night. Folks, the year 2024 is going to be a very, very, very complicated year for La Republic du Cameroon. There's no joke about this. I say it's going to be a very, very difficult year for La Republic du Cameroon. You could read that from the speech presented to the people of that country by Mr. Paul Beer. You could even see from the incoherent nature of his speech that, uh, you know, he has completely lost his, his bearing. He had exhausted everything he could tell the people to send them to sleep. A lot of the families of the soldiers that have even fallen in Amazonia on a reckless campaign, some of those family members don't even know that their children have long died. They kept believing that they were still on the battlefield in areas where they could not be reached. 
by either MTN, Orange, Camtel, or Nextel networks. And so some of them end up seeing, but on social media, the pictures of their children that have already fallen. So the malaise is great. I bet you the malaise is really great. And for the first time in a long while, like to read Cameroon is beginning to admit, at least their president is beginning to admit that uh, the, that, uh, I mean, all is not well. Yeah, that all is not well, that there is no money, that life is going to get really harder. Although they'll try to deflect, make other claims, but of course you and I know. And I'll be demonstrating that here in just a little bit. So before I get into that, I want to start with this uh, this uh, issue which may seem, uh, you know, light, but of course it's fundamental and very important. You know why I say so? Because in effect, the citizens of La Republic du Cameroon, I've said this from time immemorial, had never really seen us as full-blown citizens of that country. This is something that we have known for a long time, but some have lived in denial. Next, the citizens of La Republic du Cameroon don't only see us not as full citizens, they even see us more or less as slaves. That is why you hear them commonly use the word, because unfortunately they use the word Bamenda. You hear them say, can't you at Bamenda? Vraiment tu es tranquille. And when they say, can't you at Bamenda? They mean if you succeed, you have your plantation, you have your, I mean, you need someone to work in your house, you have your this and that, you have your farms, you have your taxi, you have your everything. If you succeed in getting a Bamenda, that's Tom Bamenda. Because sometimes when they say Tom Bamenda, it doesn't mean it's only from Bamenda. That they are looking at the, at the situation of Southern Cameroonians. When they say country at Tom Bamenda, they mean that when you already have that, you're a slave. That there are people who don't even know anything. They take our honesty, I mean our honesty, for a weakness. That's what they insult. Because they consider that they take you, I had a conversation with one of them, an Eton fellow. He says they just take you, put on the farm there, farm that he himself had, you know, tilled, used people in the village, had never been able to get even 200,000 francs out of that farm. But he confided the farm to someone from the southern, from the southern Cameroons who came looking for a portion to cultivate their own farms. So he confided in his own portion and had his own identity. And then the man said within a few months, he could get 500,000, 600,000. 800 tons come, the person has tilled the farm, cultivated, harvested crops, sold, and kept. Say, man, je n'ai jamais vu ça. And then instead of praising such a fellow, you are demeaned. C'est vraiment quand tu as ton bamenda, tu peux dormir tranquille. And despite all that honesty, at the least error, the punishment that you get, the correction that you get, is commensurate only to that given to a slave, only to that given to a inanimate uh, object so that has been the lot if you go to most of their homes they have our sisters our wives our children especially since 2017 the outbreak of this uh, this conflict this mr bias genocidal war in the southern cameroons most of their houses have but our sisters our wives our children as domestic servants whom they exploit to the fullest and pay worse than catechist salaries but at the least error what they get is horrible this is why i've said a thousand and one times to our people la republic of cameroon citizens have never considered us as human beings when they sit and say our brothers or our sisters we are not therefore stop thinking anything in that light and that's why i've said don't run away from the fire pan and get into fire because it becomes double jeopardy they use you they exploit you of course they have used a lot of them as prostitutes they exploit you they even kill some they torture you in all forms and at the same time they go ahead to tell the international community that you are living peacefully freely and enjoying in their land because you know they are humane they are nice and you don't even feel like we need to go. That there is no problem. It's only some people who are disturbing that there are problems. So you end up in what I call double jeopardy. I'm saying this because of this particular case. Look at this young lady here. This young lady you see on my screen, her name is Brendalyn B. 
Yes, if I'm not mistaken, her name is Brendaline B. So this young lady, Brendaline B, she has been a house server, call it house girl, to a couple in La Republic du Cameroon there for 14 years. I mean for 14 good years. She has been a domestic servant in this home for 14 good years. From findings, she is not registered with the National Social Insurance Fund. From findings, her pay is not up to 50,000 francs. I mean, her pay was never up to 50,000 francs. And you would like to know that she was not just a domestic servant to any Tom Digo Harry. She was a domestic servant to a couple linked to the presidential family. To someone by name uh, Christian Mataga. Christian Mataga is the director general of the forestry company of Mr. Paul Bia's son, Frank Bia. And this Christian Mataga, this Christian Mataga, is a very close friend of Frank's, but son, but the son of Mr. Bia's lead, very close friend, a guy with whom they were at the seminary. So this is to say that Brendan B was a housemaid to a member of the presidential family of La Republique du Cameroon, treated in this kind of manner, that is paid not up to 50,000 francs a month. She has a family, husband and two children. And this poor girl, therefore, this poor young lady, found herself in a very nasty situation. A situation where she caught her boss. That was somewhere on the 14th of December to report that one of the cooks, one of the mates in the house, one of the workers, a gentleman from the center in the house, had broken into the boss's room, into Mr. Christian Mataga's room. And this is Christian Mataga on this picture that you see. Uh, that is him and that is his wife on the, on, on the other side. Mr. Mataga is standing to the left of uh, Francis Nganu while his wife is standing to the right of Francis Nganu. That is the couple. That Brendan B, that you just watched, that, uh, whose, who, who, whose picture I displayed there a while ago, served for 14 good years. And so, it came to pass that one of the cooks, whose name is Mbem Loga Michel, is reported to have broken into the room of Mr. Mataga and the wife. While Brendan B, according to the story, was taking her bath. This gentleman broke into the room, shattered the safe and, and uh, you know, other objects where money is kept because money apparently is thrown anyhow. Of course, this people we know. The last time we heard about the director of civil cabinet, uh, and they said uh, over uh, 1.4, getting to 2 billion CFA funds was stolen from his house in cash. I mean, in cash, in cash, almost 2 billion CFA francs, and no one has gone after him. There is a law in Cameroon that forbids people from hoarding money in the houses. They expect you to put that money in the bank. That is why if you are a civil servant or a state agent, if your salary is above 100,000 francs, they oblige you to open a bank account because they don't want people to be circulating with so much cash or hoarding money in their homes. But that law has never been applied. So Vonda Yolo, close to 2 billion. We heard a lot about Mama Fuda with 400 million stolen from his house. 600 million stolen from his house. We've heard about uh, Jacques Famundongo. When people walk in his house, at one point said there are rooms in the house where he, he returns from work each day sometimes with bags of money and they just throw those bags into those rooms. That there's money in his house that can be, that's more than money that would, that would be in about two to three banks put together. And so this young man broke into the room of Mr. Mataga, snatches 20 million CFA francs and disappears. Poor Brenda. Poor Brenda Lindby 
when she comes from taking her bath, she realizes that something had just happened and moves in and notices that someone had broken into the room of the boss and that suddenly they had stolen money. She is the one who calls the boss and the wife, who were not around, to inform them on December 14 that something like that had just happened. The gentleman succeeded in crossing out through the gates where the security guards were with the money by deceiving them that the boss had directed him to take money and certain objects. I think he, was, he, he didn't even show that there was money. He said to go and deliver a parcel because the bag that he carried with the money inside, he put other things on top of that bag. And so the security guards let him go out. And Brendan B is who calls the boss to report. Guess what happens? When the boss comes back, they immediately call in a uh, security. They call in the security services to take charge of the, the, the situation. They, they call the famous said, um, where Sisiku Ayuktabe and uh, uh, members of his cabinet were kept in communicado for over eight months. They call the, 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 the said and hand in Brenda Limby. That is the person that reported becomes the, the, the first suspect. And this poor girl, despite all her explanations, no, they kept her in detention through Christmas. From the 14th of December through Christmas, she spent Christmas at the set, where she underwent all forms of torture so she could confess that that cook seemingly was her boyfriend and the, and the, and, and, and the team talked together so that she would steal the, the money. And then she would pretend as if she doesn't know. The poor lady explained she didn't even know exactly what was happening or what they were talking about. Despite that, her children and her poor husband cried their tears dry, cried their eyes dry. They never bothered these heartless human beings. I mean, these heartless human beings kept Brendan B in detention until the 3rd of January. So she spent Christmas and New Year in in in, in January uh, uh, detention. And finally, on the 3rd of January, she was taken to a state council who threw her on a awaiting trial in Kondengi. Now, look at this. If you don't want to say that this is a clear demonstration that the kind of treatment being meted out to Southern Cameroonians in the Republic of Cameroon is official government position, if you have ever doubted that, this is one evidence too clear that you should no longer doubt. Because this is a presidential family. Now, what happened? You have not heard that the security guards who were in the house were detained for even one minute. I mean, the security guards who are not Southern Cameroonians, who are not Amazonians, none of them was ever detained even for 10 seconds. But this gentleman, for him to succeed in escaping with the money, had to pass through the gates where the security guards, the security guards let him go. No security guard is in detention. None of them were ever even bothered for one second. But the vulnerable person among them who had no powers to be able to stop the thief, Ben Logan Michel, from running away when he had stolen this money. Because the security guards are the last defense that they get there against such an error. No, because they are citizens of the Republic of Cameroon, nothing ever happened or will ever happen to them. But because Brendan B is not a human being, despite serving these people for 14 years and never being accused for ever stealing even 1,000 francs, she's in jail. And this is by the presidential family. Presidential family. Christian Mataga, who I'm showing on the screen here, is the director general of the forest of a forestry company, a mega forestry company, where they turn billions of CFA francs owned by Frank Beer, supposed son of the president of the republic. Do these people have consciences? Do these people care? This is one more act, one more act that should send a sound message to the minds and souls of every single Southern Cameroonian that the people of La Republic of Cameroon have never and will never 
consider us as humans. Why are we begging for relationships? I hear some people still sit and have the, uh, uh, the audacity to still be talking federalism, confederation, or any kind of form of union with La Republic du Cameroon. These people see us as animals. At worst, or at best, they see us as slaves. And see the kind of treatment given. This is somebody who has served for 14 good years. 14 years. Diligently. When you look at her, she doesn't look like someone who should actually be working the kind of place where she's working with the kind of people that she is working. On a pay of less than 50,000 francs, serving members of the presidential family. Listen, folks. What has happened or is happening to Brenda Lynn B is not an isolated case. That is what is happening to our folks all over La Republic du Cameroon. Some are even simply treated in the farms, in the lake, in the farms, in the bam, in the farms, beaten and even killed and buried. And nobody knows. That's why some of our people get up and start saying, we have family members who went to this time, we are looking for them for years now, we have not heard from or about them anymore. That is their fate. I think Brenda Lynn B should just be in jail now because of what is going on now. Because they sense that there will be an alarm. And I want to absolutely thank um, the guy of uh, the, what they call it, the TGV, the, the, the Lenfo, for bringing this particular matter public. But I've reached out to a lot of other people in Yaoundé who make me understand that the treatment they gave Ms. Brenda Lynn B. at the set was horribly inhuman. That she was beaten to pop a good number of times to force her to confess or something she knows nothing about. So right now, she's in jail. Her poor husband and children are in limbo. Despite all the years she served these people, and they can't demonstrate that there is any time she has ever stolen 50 francs. And at the same time, what is embarrassing? The gendarmerie has sent out a search warrant, or that's a, 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 a search notice regarding the supposed thief, Mbem Logan Michel, who escaped with the 20 million CFA francs. So you know the person that stole the money. Why do you keep an innocent woman? Why do you torture an innocent woman? Why do you reduce an innocent woman to a bare expression, to rubble? Folks, I'm taking a bit long on this because it's so disheartening. If Brenda Lynn B knew that she had a hand in that theft, she wouldn't have been in the house. She did not escape. She is all who called the attention of Mr. Christian Mataga and the wife. Look at them here, posing with uh, Francis Ngannou. She is all who called the attention to the fact that someone had broken into their room and stolen money, that the cook had broken into their room and stolen money. And because she knew that she was innocent, she didn't have any reason to escape. They went and took her from the house. From the house to the set. They didn't go looking for her. It's such a shame, folks. It's really such a shame. I feel so horrified by this. Let us spread the story. Let us share it to all the human rights organizations we can. So they let the world know and see exactly what we have been talking about. Because you see somewhere, when I'll be talking about Mr. Bia's speech in the, in the next few minutes, we'll be taking the three things that matter in that particular speech to show you how down they have gone. You see what he talks about justice. What a shame. What an embarrassment. Folks, I want to get out of that and I want to stop on one little thing. In this liberation movement, we have talked a lot about the need for us to put our acts together. International actors who have been struggling to woo 
to come to our rescue, to come to our aid, and to help us continually keep this genocidal conflict in the news at higher levels, to continually prick the consciences. I know you don't even win just by pricking consciences of world leaders, of global organizations, to the inhumane treatment that has been meted on the people of the southern Cameroons, to the injustices we are facing daily, and to the effect that the Republic of Cameroon needs to get out of our territory. That's not all those efforts. When we manage and get some who are paying attention to the woes of our people and to our cries, what do we end up doing? We bring our internal squabbles to the table. To the point where we even begin attacking international figures who are fighting for us simply because of our fight, our useless and stupid, senseless fight for position. Look at this. I bring this to condemn. Because you look at here. Up there is uh, Mr. Is, uh, Honorable Tibonagi. The former U.S. Undersecretary at the State Department in charge of the Bureau of African Affairs, who took delight in the fact that one of us, Commodore Chris Anu, lambasted La Republique du Cameroon and the taunted La Republique du Cameroon by saying Happy Independence Day to La Republique du Cameroon on January 1. Of course, it's something all of us should have been on Twitter doing. Tweeting Happy Independence Day to La Republique du Cameroon on January 1 to our neighbors, La Republique du Cameroon. This is a reminder to the global community that La Republique du Cameroon as a country had its independence on January 1, 1960. And they are shy to celebrate their independence because they are pretending. They were pretending before the world, before the, the world to claim that Southern Cameroons and Bazonia is part of their territory. And so, Honorable Tibonaki, that is the aspect that pricks him here. And he uses it to throw a jibe at La Republique du Cameroon. That how would they react at this? But because he referred to Chris Anu as interim government, of course, all of them are interim government factions. You see what happens? You see, Patience Abiedo, Doctor, Patience, Doctor, Patience Abiedo, comes here to attack. Mr. Nagy, I say she comes here to attack Albert Tibor Nagy. What is her point of attack? She's not seeing the giant at the Republic of Cameroon. No, 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 no. Her point is you appear to be promoting Chris Anu as the leader of Ambazonia and not Samuel Sako. What is Honorable Tibor Nagy's concern in all this? Folks, I will not be seeing on this post a kind of positioning for Comrade Chris Anu or whatsoever. I will be seeing the giant on the Republic of Cameroon. Because this tweet by Honorable T. Bonagi is certain to get into the, into the thin skin of the Republic of Cameroon. Folks, sometimes we need to set aside these senseless internal fights. We need to set aside this senseless internal rivalry and recognize that the most important thing for us at this point in time is to kick life to the Cameroon out of our territory. Once we have done that, those who are interested in leadership will present themselves before the court of public opinion. And the people the sovereign people, let me say, as Comrade Bohabed has a habit of saying, the sovereign people of Amazonia will determine who will be our leader. At this point, because I saw other people outrightly insult Honorable Tibonagi by someone who calls himself UN. I don't want to glorify him by broadcasting such a useless statement on this, on this platform. Where are we heading to? Where are we going? In 2024, we have to recognize 
that we are supposed to be expanding our international base. That's the base of our international friends. Not alienating them with our internal wranglings. They don't need it. They don't want to know about it. They are simply interested in helping see us come out of slavery and servitude. I got really bitter, disappointed, shocked, and embarrassed at the quality of people who will be going out after Honorable Tibonagi for such a tweet. What's all of this news? Let us learn. Let us learn to focus on the things that unite us. Focus on the things that advance our cause. Rather than hanging on things that will hold us to the ground. This is something very fundamental that we must bear in mind. We must learn to depart from these ugly habits in 2024. 2024 is going to be a decisive year for our liberation movement. This is why we must make haste to part with such ugly attitudes. They don't present a better picture of us. They show us as a senseless people with no sense of direction. They show us as a people who don't even know what we are up against. Let me leave, this, let, let me leave it at that. I've continued to receive reactions regarding the... Um, my last three broadcasts on uh, the outing of uh, Mr. or Professor Maurice Camto. And so, with a lot of insistence from some of our folks that I should broadcast this picture, here it comes. You look at this picture. I'm just crossing over this thing to get into the subject matter of our discussion today. You look at this picture. Of course, that is a picture that was, this picture was taken in 2010. And uh, that was Mr. Ali Tricky, was the personal representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations, who showed up in Yaoundé when La Republique du Cameroon announced they were celebrating 50 years of independence. So they showed up to present these two maps to Mr. Paul Bia as a reminder of the fact that what is was being celebrated in 2010. Of course, because the Republic of Cameroon was independent on January 1, 1960. So on January 1, 2010, the Republic of Cameroon clocked 50 years of its independence. And so Ali Triki, from the office of the Secretary General of the United Nations, came to give a present and it was therefore a reminder to Mr. Paul Bia that the United Nations actually knows two countries in this entity. Two. That is why you see the map being carried that someone has in the hands of the smaller map. That is a map of the Southern Cameroons. And the bigger map here, that is a map of La Republic du Cameroon without the Southern Cameroons. This was not an error. No. I mean, in international relations, in the world of diplomacy, they will tell you nothing is done for nothing. Nothing is done just for fancy. Every single diplomatic act has a meaning to convey. So what this was conveying clearly was conveying to Mr. Paul Bia that much as we now know La Republique du Cameroon, there is another entity known as the United Nations as the Southern Cameroons. And this La Republique du Cameroon was 50th independence, just the 50th year of independence, whose golden anniversary of independence you are celebrating is La Republique du Cameroon without the territory of the Southern Cameroon. That's why you see the maps are clearly distinct and each one is framed. Like I said in my previous broadcast, George Ewane actually got uh, a query letter and the report he, he uh, presented on CRTV television regarding this particular event was withdrawn. Because he mentioned there that there were two maps, one being the map of La Republique du Cameroon and the other map being the map of the Southern Cameroons. And they didn't like him to make that particular distinction. La Republique du Cameroon are people who have lived in denial. They are fraudsters. They are people 
who live an imaginary life, live in a, in, I mean, in a world which is not real, thinking that by this seat and by trying to bury history, they could successfully make us not know where we come from. Unfortunately for them, because someone had described it, that forcing us in a union of the Republic of Cameroon will be like putting an inflated balloon under the sea. We would explode. Of course, we did explode. And here we are today. And La Republic of Cameroon, this whole thing is over. If you don't recognize it, you should recognize it now. So, folks, I'm done with the preliminaries. Let's get into the into the real menu of the day. To the main item of discussion of the day. A lot of you really have been waiting for this analysis of Mr. Paul Bia's speech. I don't care to analyze a useless speech. I just picked three points that are important for us to see. And these three points simply to demonstrate just how horribly La Republic du Cameroon's genocidal or annexationist campaign in the southern Cameroons has gone. So, folks, like I've said, like I said at the beginning of this broadcast, 2024 is going to be a very chaotic and dark year, black year in the Republic of Cameroon. Without it, this is the tempo. You see this picture? This picture is worth more than 100,000 words. This picture should be telling you exactly how the Republic of Cameroon will look like this year. The person pictured there in the middle, pointing a finger menacingly at another one, right before cameras and right by the president of the Republic, Mr. Paul Bia, standing there, is no other person than the director of the civil cabinet, Mr. Ayolo. That is Mr. Ayolo, standing there, pointing a finger, and you can look at his facial expression menacingly. I've said here before, that La Republic de Cameroon, as you see, is a kingdom very, very divided upon itself. Once they're in the southern Cameroons, they try to unify their forces to fight us, and they give you the impression that it is a united and well-functioning entity. It is not. Because you see, right in front of the president of the republic, right before the, uh, I mean, motion, pictures before the entire world that is the director of the civil cabinet mr mvondo ayolo threatening someone really seriously look at him the way he's pointing the finger i look at his face very menacingly and you find mr pobia standing by helpless shall i put everybody's out but that is exactly the picture of how la republic is going to fare in 2024 Surprise that is coming in January because this was at the ceremony of the presentation of New Year wishes to Mr. Paul Bia by both the diplomatic corps and the national constituted corps. This picture presents the tempo. It's a clear announcement of how chaotic the Republic of Cameroon's year is going to be. That said, let us move now into that useless speech by Mr. Paul Bia. The first thing I want to point out here, like I've said a while ago, that what is going to happen is that Mr. Paul Bia and his people will soon run naked. You remember that, or you recall that in my last broadcast, that was on the 31st of December. That was hours before Mr. Paul Bia, less than an, uh, less than an hour actually, before Mr. Paul Bia took to, took to, the, to, to the rostrum to spill garbage. I noted that he was going to make false claims that the situation in the southern Cameroons, of course, was under control. Now let's go to what exactly what he said. He said, thanks, dear compatriots, thanks to the people's active cooperation with our defense and security forces, the situation in the northwest, southwest, and far north regions has improved significantly. It is now possible to calmly implement the reconstruction and development plans for the said regions, really. Really. Now look at this. This is Mr. Pobia speaking here just off. I'm continuing. However, atrocities committed by terrorists have not completely disappeared. Unfortunately, civilians are the main victims. That's what I just said up there. 
The car has returned, everything is all right, and they can go ahead to, you know, they can go ahead to implement reconstruction projects. But the very, I mean, three lines after, he says, on 6 November 2023, the town of Manfe was the scene of a barbaric massacre of some 20 civilians in the middle of the night. Folks, listen. This is someone speaking on December 31. See, calm had returned. Everything is normal and all of those things, so reconstruction will begin. Then the very next minute, he said, just a few, just, I mean, just a, just a month and uh, two weeks behind. Over 23, because he says, uh, you know, some 20, some, 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 some 20 civilians. Over 20 civilians were killed just like that. That is nothing for Mr. Paul Bia. That is nothing for him. You can keep there even in 20s, in 30s, in 40s. For Mr. Paul Bia, that is the return of normalcy. Folks, it confirms what I said, what I presented here. In that strategic document by the Betty Bulu Ekan clan on how to maintain themselves in power for life and forever, in which they said, regarding their ongoing genocidal campaign in the southern Cameroons, the number of deaths does not matter. Recall, it is on that document, and that document is in circulation. If you doubt, go back to it. They said, regarding the situation in the southern Cameroons, the number of deaths does not matter. You can see Mr. Popia confirming here. Imagine, in any country in the world, they say, 10 people, 5 people die in one instant, in one scene. The country, the president will get out, make speeches, you will see actions here and there and all or not. But for Mr. Paul Bia, that is a return to normalcy. Absolute, absolute return to normalcy. In December and on the 18th of December, days before Mr. Paul Bia made this speech, five soldiers of La Republic of Cameroon, five, died at the spot on the road in between Bafut and, uh, and, uh, and Womb, specifically at Mbekon in Lower Bafut, five, and several others were wounded. No mercy. That's no mercy. For Mr. Bia, I told you, they don't care about the number of deaths. And to citizens of the Republic of du, du Cameroon, don't think that's only on our side. It's on, it's on your side as well. Because I'm talking about soldiers. After that, three were reported dead in, uh, in, in, in Congo. After that, two were reported dead in Boyo. After that, just a, a, just a few days ago, three were reportedly captured alive. Three soldiers were captured alive. In Kumbo. Before that, you learned about four uh, had lost had lost uh, their lives in Dian. You tell her, come on, Mr. Pobia, that is a return to normalcy. Just two days ago, or oh, I think that's even yesterday, they were announcing the fall of about three again in Bermenda. That is a return to normalcy for Mr. Pobia. Folks, I have said it here, and I will reiterate. We as Ambazonians. A southern Cameroonians have to recognize that what we are faced with is an existential war. We are facing a war of annihilation. That is the reason. I continue to call on each and every one of us to recognize that there is much more that unites us than the few things that separate us, that divide us. So let us focus on those things that unite us than hanging on the things that separate us like a useless fight for leadership at a time when we should be focused on kicking La Republic of Cameroon out of our territory. Mr. Bia doesn't stop there. He says, I strongly condemn such atrocities which defy reason and have no justification whatsoever. And he goes on, I encourage our fellow citizens in the regions affected by terrorism to continue to cooperate with the defense and security forces whose courage and professionalism, I salute. Professionalism, eh? I don't want to talk about that because we all know exactly what they have been doing. But he, as long as they decimate our people from Mr. Pobia, that's professionalism. And he says, I reiterate my appeal to armed groups who lay down their arms and join disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration centers. I am pleased to note that an increasing number of the combatants have responded to this call in recent weeks. Folks, now, 
The last time I talked about the role of a disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration center, DDR center. It is actually for disarmament, for demobilization, and for reintegration. But what is the reality for those centers in the southern Cameroon? Mr. Fayego Francis, you know better. The reality is that this is a switch of camps. Those who erroneously move into those centers, thinking that they are going there to be rehabilitated, to be trained in various professions, to be given capital, or to be given jobs, to be given or, or, or given capital to start businesses here and there, they end up back on the battlefield. Why? Because they end up being dressed in the in the in the in the military attire of La Republic du Cameroon and are forced back to the battlefield where most of them get killed by those they were fighting with yesterday. This is horrible. That is not what is expected of a DDR. International norms apply in these circumstances. So for those of you who are misguided and continue to coach some of your family members who are self-defense volu uh, volunteers, who for one reason or the other say they are tired and want to stop fighting, ask them to go to the DDR, you are sending them directly to the jaws of death. Because those of them who have resisted going back to the battlefield to either lead the way to show where their former colleagues were or are, and all of those things, some of them have been killed by the same soldiers who are supposed to protect them. This is something we need to note. And you, the civilian population, that will support their cause on to cooperate. A good lot of you have ended up dying as blacklegs because you put your life in jeopardy for a system that will never protect you, will never stand up for your family members, for your wife, for your children, if you are killed, that will simply not even recall that someone ever existed like you. Because as far as they are concerned, the number of death doesn't matter. What is more important for them is maintaining their colonial grip over the territory of the southern Cameroons. So, beware. Avoid. Desist from allowing yourself to be used by an evil system. And don't, because that is exactly what they do. And so Mr. Paul Bia ends on that aspect by saying, for those who persist in criminal activity, be it terrorism or organized crime, the fate that awaits them is not an enviable one. They must know that our firm determination to ensure the security of our fellow citizens will never falter. Now, what amuses me in that is that while Mr. Bia makes this statement on the 31st of December, few days after, while receiving New Year wishes from the diplomatic community from diplomats accredited to Yaoundé, Mr. Pobia preaches the language of dialogue, referring to the conflict in the Middle East and between Ukraine and Russia. Mr. Pobia is quick to preach dialogue as the only way that Cameroon believes should lead to sustainable peace. Paradox, right? This is not the first time that he's doing that, so there's no point, you know, wasting so much time on that. I want to move on that, on to the next aspect. And folks, recall, I said 2024 will be a very horrible year for citizens of the Republic of Cameroon, especially on the economic plane. I say so and I'm loving. Because while Mr. Paul Bia in his speech screams, shouts, says the economic woes of the Republic of Cameroon, are as a direct consequence of the war between Ukraine and Russia, and also of the conflict in the Middle East between Hamas and the, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces. Don't forget that the conflict between Hamas and the Israeli Defense Forces is just a, it's less than three years, it's less than three months old. But Mr. Paul Bia considers that that one has contributed enormously enormously to the destruction of the economy of La Republic of Cameroon, which has been on a free fall since 2017. And they have been pretending and living on loans until very few or almost no international partners 
are interested anymore in lending money to La Republic du Cameroon because La Republic du Cameroon can no longer pay. Mr. Paul Bia says that because of all this, that the war between Ukraine and Russia that has increased the price of cereal, the price of everything, things have become so complicated for the economy of Cameroon. Folks, the truth that Mr. Paul Bia doesn't want to tell anyone is that La Republic du Cameroon today has an astounding international debt, that's external debt of about 12,000 billion CFA. 12,000 billion CFA. Because La Republic du Cameroon, I mean La Republic du Cameroon, gathers all the money in the country and devotes it to defense. To fight in Ambazoni. Quarterly, quarterly, La Republic du Cameroon does not spend less than 250 billion CFA francs on their genocidal campaign in the southern Cameroon. I mean, not less than 250 billion. These are internal statistics that I got from the Ministry of Finance. And you know what? Despite that, there are talks on the field. Don't even have state of the art equipment to fight. Most of the armored cars they have brought in, these are the best and whatever, have ended destroyed in the southern Cameroons because of the local technology of our self defense volunteers. A lot of businesses that made a lot of money in the southern Cameroons are about folding up. Some have simply completely folded up. No more taxes. You don't forget that in a lot of places the Southern Cameroon people don't even pay taxes. It doesn't exist. So there is nothing that getting out of there this far shy of the crude oil that's getting in the seas off the coast in Kelimbo. La Republic du Cameroon's genocidal campaign in Ambazonia has been extremely costly continues to be extremely costly and partially because of rampant embezzlement in the ranks of the military. You recall in the early years of this uh, armed conflict, I had said I had a lot of confidence in the military class, the people at the Ministry of Defense in the Republic of Cameroon to take advantage of this war and sweep the treasury and ruin the treasury of that country. I was confident they would do it. And I'm very proud today that they have done just that. And they will continue to do that. Now, La Republic du Cameroon has been pushed to a corner where they have now forced every single individual in that country to begin feeling the effects of the war. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 2020, 2020, 2023 was just genesis. The first quarter of 2024 will still be genesis. Listen, by the time they get to Malakai, citizens of La Republic du Cameroon will start eating the earth with their tongues. Because look, folks, last year, La Republic du Cameroon could not help it. They increased the price. They increased the price of fuel, of super, by 100 francs. Going from 630 to 730 francs CFA per liter. They increased the price of diesel by over 100 francs. And of course, what should have been expected? The cost of transportation naturally increased. The cost of goods and services increased. And at that time, they pretended that they were raising the incomes of the people by 5%. And, like, and I demonstrated here that someone earning 100,000 francs, an increase of 5%, that's before tax, the gross income will mean 5,000 francs. And when it is taxed, you are left with about 3,000 or something. Call it even 4,000. But the price of petroleum is increased by over 100 francs. On average, I'm taking uh, super and diesel. Or just put it at 100 francs per liter. Per liter. So by the time you buy 10 liters, 1,000 is already gone. Of that, you have, you have, you have 4,000. If you have a car that takes 60 liters for you to get a full tank, by the time you make one full tank, 
The 4,000 has evaporated plus another 2,000. That money is finished. It was a marriage. And now, La Republic du Cameroon again is back to the war. Back to the war. It is not going. It is not going. The pressure from the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank is there for La Republic du Cameroon to stop any form of subsidies on petroleum products. And one thing we must learn here, because sometimes they didn't say subsidies, you think that they actually carry billions to pay in, that displays billions of CFA funds to pay in in order to reduce the cost of petroleum. No, it's simply that they reduce some taxes on the cost of a liter of petroleum. Because on that liter of petrol, of super taxes alone account for at least 480 CFA francs. I mean, taxes alone. So now the pressure from the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank is for those taxes to be maintained because Cameroon must have to pay its external debts, it must honor its international engagements with international finance bodies, with international partners. And for that reason, they must look for the money. That is why the level of suffering is going to be unimaginable. Here, Mr. Paul Bia here. Last year, the government increased slightly the pump prices of fuel. As a result, the subsidy on petroleum products decreased from over 1,000 billion CFA francs in 2022 to around 640 billion CFA francs in 2023. Look at that. If the reduction after an increase of 100 francs per liter from 1,000 billion only comes down to about 640 billion, it tells you where the liter, where the cost of a liter of petrol will be when there will no longer be any subsidy at all. And the goal is to get to that place where there will be no subsidy at all. Mr. Dia continues. However, this subsidy continues to weigh heavily on public coffers. I'm not being talk. Though we will most certainly have no choice. I said so. Have no choice. I like the choice of words. Though we will most certainly have no choice but to reduce it further, that to reduce the subsidy further, we will ensure that the requisite adjustments do not significantly impact the purchasing power of households. <laughs> so Mr. Paul Bia has said what should have been said in very blunt terms to the people, in very coded terms, in such a way that some of the people don't even understand that what Mr. Paul Bia is saying here, he is announcing another increase on the price of fuel. The argument they take is that the cost of crude oil has continually gone up on the international market. False. Because we are here in the United States, of course, we, we can all see it. There was a time it was over $129 a barrel. Today, it's less than $80 a barrel. That's why you see the price of gas, of a gallon of gas in the United States dropping continually. For a few months now, the price has been on a downward spiral, not on an upward spiral. Because if that were the case, the military leader of Gabon would not be announcing a reduction of the price of a liter of petrol in Nesdor Gabon, where the where it, it already costs just 595 CFA francs a liter, it's going to drop further. While in Cameroon, they are telling you that international uh the international climate, the war in Ukraine and Russia, the war in the Middle East, and all of those things, and the and the you know the growing price of uh, petroleum products of, uh, I mean, crude oil on the international market is affecting. Next door, Gabon is not affecting. Next door, Nigeria, we are not there. Next door, Equatorial Guinea, we are not there. In Chad, we are not yet there. In next door, Congo, we are not yet there. Even the Central African Republic that does not produce oil, we are not yet there. 
my people of Amazonia. The cost of occupation is growing, growing at an alarming rate. La Republic du Cameroon is getting to breaking point. They are getting exactly to that place where we had wanted them to be. Folks, this is why this January 2024, I want to specifically congratulate those our competitors who were shipping container upon container to the Douala Seaport and who have decided to stop because you are going to help close another, reduce, thin another source of revenue for La Republic du Cameroon. That's the custom duties. Folks, if you are one of those who is still shipping to Douala, stop it. Trust me, we are almost getting to the end. It will not be long before this whole thing crumbles. And we will get to where we want to go. We will get to where we had always wished to get to. Just a bit of cooperation. Just a little bit more of sacrifice. And we will get there. That's what I'm saying. I am heartily congratulating those who were shipping containers to La Republic du Cameroon and who have decided to stop. That is a key aspect of our economic sabotage campaign. Because it is already paying off. Folks, you want to know how it is paying off? Let me let me put it this way. You see that not only would the price of petroleum products increase, I spoke to some people at the Ministry of Finance and they told me super is going to go from 730 to 860 francs. I said here the last time that you are going to hear that because there's already a rumor circulating. There's only circulating on social media, oh, the price is going to 860, and they say, oh, no, that one is unofficial, it's just speculation. No, 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 no. La Republic du Cameroon is preparing the minds of the people. They've always done that. So that when it finally comes, people say, oh, it was already there. So they may, at the end of the day, not do 860, but do about 830 or 850. So they say, oh, no, it was slightly less. But that is exactly where it is headed. But at the end of the day, it is going to get up to 1,000 francs a litre of super in La Republic du Cameroon. For those of you who continue to insist to force us into this horrible place called La Republic du Cameroon, you soon have a taste of your own medicine. And folks, don't forget that while these prices are going up like that, those who are going to suffer the most are the 99 or 98.5 percent of the masses who sit and say, No, ils vont lire, on va les mater, le bille va les calmer, ils vont se calmer. They are the ones who are going to pay the price because the ministers, the secretaries of state, the secretaries general, the directors, the directors general, all those people are going to be fueling their cars with government vouchers. From money collected from the masses as taxes, they will never feel the pinch. A good lot of them have credit lines, 300 million, 400 million just to put petrol in their cars. And so they'll be able to provide petrol for themselves free of charge and to their girlfriends and their family members. You will pay the price. Continue to say I'm a black lad, I'm a proud black lad. You will pay the price. This is what awaits you. As a direct consequence of this statement by Mr. Bia, you already see that a lot of government institutions are going to be stifled of money. They are already going after the local masses again, extorting from the local masses to make money to run their institutions. One of them is the University of Boya. You see there? The Vice Chancellor of the University of Boya on January 4, that's just three days ago, 2024, published uh, a release saying, an, an announcement saying, the degree certificates for students of the university from 2019 to 2021 have been printed and they are now available. But you only obtain your certificate after showing proof or presenting a receipt of the payment of the sum of 2,000 francs to collect your certificate. To collect your own certificate. Where in the world have we seen that? Where have we seen that? 
And why were people graduating in 2019? It is in uh, 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 2019, 2020, 2021. It is in 2024 that their certificates are made available. Look at the kind of system. Folks, this is what we are trying to run away from. But like the beauty camera right now is cash trapped. You recall that recently there was another announcement from the Ministry of Transport saying that a driving school training center or a, or, 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 or a training center for drivers was created at the University of Boya to encourage students to take training there and get driver's licenses. And the minister was not shy in saying in that, in that announcement that it will provide a rare opportunity, a most needed opportunity for the University of Boya to generate revenues to run its affairs. And of course also to provide revenue for the Ministry of Transport to run its own affairs. Things are getting too rough. Things are getting too rough in La Republic of Cameroon and there is no money. For those who are using MTM mobile money, uh, 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 orange, uh, orange money, and uh, you know, all those money transfers, La Republic of Cameroon has increased, increased its taxes on mobile money transfers. Has increased its taxes on mobile money transfer by at least 4%. I mean, they are mad. Very soon, you pay a tax on the oxygen that you breathe. And if you are doubting that you will get there, look at this one. For those of you, for those of you who are planning to travel out of La Republic du Cameroon to go to anywhere, take note that henceforth, one of the documents you have to present at the embassy to apply for a visa will be a tax clearance certificate. Did you hear me? Whether you are a businessman, whether you are a buy and seller, whether you own just a small store, whether you are a bike rider, whether you are a student or whatsoever, you will have to demonstrate before a, uh, the consular officers of all the diplomatic missions in Yaoundé and in Douala when you want to travel abroad that you have paid your taxes before you can be issued with a visa. Did you hear that? I've never heard about this in any country in the world. Never ever. Never. Do you know why La Republic of Cameroon has descended to this point? Because La Republic of Cameroon knows, the authorities of La Republic of Cameroon know that the country has become worse than hell to the point where everyone wants to leave the country. That is why in that country, in La Republic of Cameroon, to obtain a national identity card will tell you years, months and years. It's very complicated. But to obtain an international passport to travel, you can get within 24 hours now. If it's too long, 72 hours. I mean an international passport in La Republic of Cameroon now. I you know it's very expensive. It's over 100,000. They know that people want to leave the country. So they look for every avenue where the people have a lot of pensions. They say, this is where we will trap them and collect money from them. And now they know, because they've seen the volume of people going to obtain international passports, they know after obtaining your passport, the next thing you will do is go to an embassy to seek a visa. And so after collecting a huge sum of money from you for a passport, because you end up spending over 150 to 120, thousand CFA to obtain that, that passport, you will now go to an embassy for a visa. They will hold you again there. Have you paid your taxes? You must show proof of having paid taxes. When you go to a taxation office to obtain the tax clearance certificate, I'm waiting for those who will be going there quickly to come and tell me what their experience will be. Whether you have a business or not on everything, the tax officer will tell you you will have to prove. You will end up paying some money. Because first, you will tender an application. For that tax clearance certificate. The application for that tax clearance certificate will have to be stamped. The fiscal stamp now is 1,000, is it 1,500 if I'm not mistaken? The fiscal stamp is about 1,500, if it's not 1,200, I think it should be 1,200 or 1,500. I didn't do a last verification on the current cost. So you put that fiscal stamp on the application. We put that fiscal stamp on the application to request this document. 
Depending on how soon you need it, you will spend money in bribe. Did you understand that? You will spend money in bribe. And at the end of the day, they may say, because they are unable to demonstrate that you don't have any business, that you are not doing any economic activity, they will give you a blanket kind of assessment and ask you to go and pay taxes. Oh, you will never go there and come away from there with that document to simply show that, no, you do not deserve to pay anything. Trust me, that is not going to happen. And if you are not careful, they will tell you before presenting that application, you will put a certified copy of this, a certified copy of that, a certified copy of that. So at the end of the day, just the document to obtain that tax clearance certificate, you may end up spending about, I mean, over 5,000 francs just to apply to prove that you don't deserve to pay taxes because you are not doing any form of business or just to present that I'm a civil servant, you see, that I've already cut my taxes from the base because they did not make any exception. It's fundraising. Folks, I've not seen any country in the world like that. Today in the Republic of Cameroon, even if you don't have a national identity card, it's possible for you to obtain an international passport. Oh yes, they know everybody wants to leave. And so you are going to apply for that visa, you are not even sure that you obtain that visa, that you will be granted the visa, but you have to spend this money with the government of Cameroon. You have to pay the visa fee at the embassy concerned. Oh Lord, God have mercy on those people. What a cruel country. What a horrible country. But you see, all this, is as a result of La Republique du Cameroon's genocidal campaign in Amazon. It is a direct result of La Republique du Cameroon's genocidal campaign in Amazon. The cost of occupation has gone over the roof. La Republique du Cameroon can no longer bear it. And so the people who thought that even Lila, they will Lila. Citizens of La Republic of Cameroon and those so-called people who say we are proud black legs, you will read the clock. You said no. You said us. On va les dératiser. On va les, on va les tétaniser. On va les, on va les écraser. Le bille va les faire se calmer. Avec l'arrivée d'un Tanganji, ils vont se calmer. Oh, ils vont... You will read the clock. Citizens of La Republic of Cameroon, vous allez lire le... Vous allez lire leur. Ah non, vous êtes déjà en train de lire leur. Oh my goodness. Listen, this is not the last of the taxes that you are going to hear about in La Republic du Cameroon. You will soon pay a tax on the oxygen that you breathe. Until you get there, you will not understand where you are. So let's finish up with this last aspect of uh, Zabia's speech. I'm already ending. I said there were just three aspects. It was a situation in southern Cameroon, so fuel prices and, of course, justice. Mr. Pobia says, Improving the business climate is clearly a prerequisite for attracting foreign investment and creating a robust private sector that should facilitate our transition to emergence through dynamic job and wealth creation. Yeah, he said, talk about emergence. In an economy which is on a huge free fall. Yeah, he said, talk of emergence. And he says, trust in the judicial system is inevitable for perception of the, of, of the business climate. As you are aware, the judiciary is one of the pillars of the rule of law. Can Pobia really make this kind of statement? Can Pobia make this kind of statement? The entire world knows that the rule of law had long died in the Republic of Cameroon. If not, why would a young girl, why would a young girl like Brendan B be doing in jail when the facts are clear that the person who stole the money is on the run and they're after that person who stole the money. If the rule of law had not long died, why would Brendan B be behind bars? Why the security guards who were at the gate and opened the gate and facilitated the passage of the thief with the booty? are quietly still doing their jobs and earning their money. Where is the rule of law? This is because he only took a phone call 
that Mr. Christian Mataga for Brenda B to be rotting in jail after serving them diligently for 14 years. If the rule of law had not died, what will Sisiku Ayuktabe Julius and all his cabinet of the Nether Ten team be doing in jail? What would all the Southern Cameroonians be picked for no good reason? Some that they do not have identifications at cards. Some that they do not pay 50000 as bribe to go back home. In their thousands, why would they be rotting in jails in the Republic of Cameroon if there was the rule of law? Oh, yes. Mr. Kobia will talk about this. Because recently we saw the, the drama of a judge signing in the morning that these people who are in jail, you know, I find them not guilty. They really, there's nothing against them. I'm dropping all charges. They should be released. And by evening, the same judge signs that I don't recognize when the document comes from is fake. Oh, yes. It is because of that drama that Mr. Pobia makes this statement. Folks, look at something. Mr. Pobia will make this statement because all the big companies in the world that like to invest in other countries have left that Republic of Cameroon. They have all left. There is none. Check the percentage of foreign direct investment in the Republic of Cameroon. That is what brings in much needed foreign currency. That helps create foreign currency reserves. Check. Nothing. Because the rule of law has collapsed. Now, if you go to Cameroon, it's a jungle. No business, international business entity in the right frame of mind will invest in La Republic du Cameroon. That's why about all the companies, all the public companies in La Republic du Cameroon are bankrupt. I showed a report here which indicated that companies of the public sector were owing a whooping 274 billion CFA. A whooping 274 billion CFA. And they are going to witness the thinning of their resources again. So a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Because a good lot of these public companies are either going to be privatized soon or they'll simply shut their doors. It's not going. The stay of La Republic in Ambazonia is beginning to demonstrate its clear consequences on the economy of that country. I want to doff my heart to all our brave hearts, to all our self-defense volunteers for their selfless service to the nation. I'll be coming tomorrow with a special message, a big pigeon, to all our self-defense volunteers on exactly what they should do and what they should not be doing at this time. Because this year is a very important year and we must consolidate the gains that we have made. We must continue to increase, to raise the cost of occupation. We must continue to make it difficult for La Republic du Cameroon to have free passage on our land. I want to congratulate the civilian population for continually observing the Monday ghost towns. That too has crippled La Republic du Cameroon tremendously and brought them to their knees where they are right now. La Republic du Cameroon today is a breaking point. It is not going. 2024 is a black year for La Republic of Cameroon. It's a year of tears. We will stand by and we will watch those ones who told us, Vous allez lire. We will be telling them, not Vous aussi, vous allez lire leur nom, vous vous telling them. Quelle est votre expérience quand vous êtes déjà en train de lire leur? Misery is coming their way. They will understand what we went through. They will have a taste of their own medicine. Folks, that night, that long night is not too far again. It is very close. Don't forget this picture. Keep this picture in mind. That is the tempo of exactly what is right ahead in 2024. By the time we get to 2025, it will already be something else. I'd like to stop here and I want to thank each and every one of you. Those of you who stayed up late to be part of this broadcast, my apologies for beginning uh, this late. Like I said, I was to get to coming out of illness and I have to put myself together to do this broadcast. So thank you very much. 
and uh, to God be the glory. And uh, I mean, like I said, this year we will we will communicate more often to ensure that we remain mobilized, we remain focused, or to we kick La Republic of Cameroon out of our territory because La Republic of Cameroon must go. Shake, shake, no day. Shake, shake, no day. To God be the glory.